The bloodline is complete and the unification match is set. This is the Smackdown Review. Hello everyone, welcome to NLW Figs once again. This is the Smackdown Review. As you saw on Monday with Raw and NXT, I've started to do more of these weekly show reviews and this is another one here with Smackdown which saw a unification match in its main event for the Tag Team Championships who would be the undisputed Tag Team Champions we found out on Smackdown. But before I get into the review, make sure you like the video if you enjoy and subscribe to NLW Figs for more wrestling figure content and as always, comment down below what did you think of Smackdown? I'd love to hear your thoughts in those comments. So, without further ado, let's get right into the show. And first of all, we kicked off with the Bloodline themselves. This is what usually happens with uh, Roman Reigns and the Usos whenever they're out here. Roman says, acknowledge me. And then he kind of alludes to, uh, you know, kicking the Usos out of the Bloodline if they are not successful in the Tag Team Championship unification match later. Uh, Heyman goes on a little bit too, uh, talking about the kind of uh, Wild Samoans and their kind of lineage as a family and then kind of alludes to the fact that the Usos could do something that they never did and become undisputed tag team champions. And yeah, this segment went a little bit long for my liking, but it's always good to see Roman Reigns on the mic. Um, he's improved a lot and yeah, the kind of added tension of, you know, what if the Usos weren't able to win those titles? What would Roman do? So, uh, you know, the segment ends, they hug and that's that. Next up, our first match of the evening as Shinsuke Nakamura takes on Sami Zayn. And I actually really enjoyed this matchup for what it was. Um, it's uh, had a lot, enough time to it, I should say. So you had Shinsuke kind of dominating early. Sami Zayn looked like he was about to run away, however, brought him back in the ring. So we had Shinsuke with a bunch of kicks, a bunch of strikes, and then Sami Zayn it did end up taking control for a lot of this matchup. And at one point, it looked as if Shinsuke was going to get counted out again, like he was a couple of weeks ago, but he manages to break the count. And then uh, the same things happened to Sami Zayn. He's on the outside. He's about to be counted out comes back in the ring at the count of 10 and then boom gets hit with a Kinshasa and Shinsuke Nakamura gets the win and they're still teasing something between Shinsuke and Roman Reigns which I would love to see not maybe it not at Hell in a Cell but certainly um, on an episode of Smackdown at some point I think that would be a really good feud to go forward for the Tribal Chief um, but still good matchup for me uh, I enjoy seeing these two work would love to have them wrestle again and again because I love these two um, just fighting each other so yeah good stuff here next up we had Baron Corbin or Happy Corbin here on Happy Talk talking about what happened last week again this segment did feel like it went on quite a long time uh, Baron Corbin he was kind of pointed at the screen showing what he did to Madcap Moss uh, breaking his neck um, and taking the trophy in the process so really kind of just showing a more vicious side of his character as of late um, breaking the trophy as well smashing it over the stairs and just showing his dominant side really um, yeah not really much to say about this segment did go on a little bit long but um, yeah it got over what it needed to get over and hopefully this means bigger things for Madcap Moss moving forward once he inevitably returns for revenge. Speaking of revenge, Gunther looking to take out Drew Gulak in this matchup and it's a real shame really that it was a squash because it could have been a lot more but I understand that they're trying to push Gunther so yeah Drew barely gets any offense in this one. It's a couple of chops and some brutal strikes from Gunther to win this one. He gets in the Boston Crab as well and he's wrenching back on it as far as he can and Drew Gulak he He's just tapping out, man. And then eventually, it's Ricochet, the Intercontinental Champion, who comes down to make the save. So it does look like we're going to get Gunther versus Ricochet for the Intercontinental title sooner rather than later. And inevitably, Gunther going to become the Intercontinental Champion, which I'd be really happy with, to be honest. Um, a decent match, to be honest, like for a squash match. Love to see Gunther in the ring, whatever he's doing. Uh, it's just a shame that Drew Gulak is like perennial jobber at the moment. But hopefully, they uh, do something with him uh, more substantial in the future. And yeah, I'm all for the Gunther for push keep pushing him take the title from ricochet and just be a dominant intercontinental champion i think that's what smackdown needs right now Next up, we have the debut of Max Dupree, aka LA Knight, and I'm not gonna crap all over the name change because they've done it, they've done far worse in the past than this one. It is a fine name change, to be honest, so not really gonna complain about that there. Uh, next up, we also had RK Bro in the back saying they were gonna become SmackDown Tag Team Champions and Raw Tag Team Champions and unify them. Then we had Shotzi and Raquel Gonzalez, or Raquel Rodriguez, kind of arguing in the backstage area, just talking about um, the opportunity that Raquel got last week, and it was a good match as well last week. 
week against Ronda Rousey. Um, would hope to see more for Raquel in the future, but it's Raquel versus Shotzi, and this one, not as much of a squash as I was anticipating, actually. Shotzi got in some offense of her own, and then eventually it was Raquel Gonzalez winning, or Raquel Rodriguez, I'm still not used to the name change, powerbombing Shotzi and winning the matchup and posing afterwards. So yeah, a decent women's division matchup for my liking. Uh, I think that Shotzi as well is someone who could be doing more than just being uh, jobbed out. But to be honest, like not really jobbed out. She had a good uh, showing for herself in this one. And Raquel Rodriguez still uh, continuing on that push for her. And I'm all for it. I like to see new faces being pushed on SmackDown. So guess a thumbs up from me. Next up, Xavier Woods went one-on-one -on -one with Butch again, and it feels like we've had this matchup loads and loads and loads of times. It feels like they've wrestled at least three or four times now, and it, it's getting a little bit repetitive, to be honest, although this matchup was decent. I did enjoy it. Um, obviously, this time, there was no Kofi at ringside, so uh, once again, Woods with the roll-up on Butch to win, like we've seen numerous times in the past, but at the end of the match, Sheamus uh, and Ridge Holland come out on the stage, and then Woods is blindsided by Butch, so uh, Butch again getting angry and punched Woods in the face but yeah a solid match but again we've seen it before and I wish they would do something more with this feud like move it on because it feels like the tables match they had a couple weeks ago that would have been the perfect blow off to this feud but I guess we've got to keep it going for some reason so there's that next up as well something that I don't know really made me angry the uh, the uh, Sasha Banks Naomi situation um, basically Michael Cole reiterating that they let millions of fans down which is uh, quite hyperbolic in my opinion um, they didn't let me down personally I think that they have every right to walk away if you know if it's not a work and it is like a shoot thing that they're unhappy then why not like they they're not um, you know they may be contracted and I understand but at the same time like sometimes you know, I, I, don't, I have sympathy for them, to be honest. Like, uh, I don't have sympathy for the company trying to make them out as these horrible people who have left the fans in the dirt because, you know, like, if they want to walk out, then that's their prerogative. It's not none of my business. And, you know, it's none of the business of the fans either, to be honest. That's just my opinion, really. Um, Sasha Banks and Naomi don't owe anyone anything. They're, they're human beings with lives and uh, all sorts. And if they're not happy in their job, then that's, that's fine, you know? And they want to elevate that division in my opinion they have really elevated that tag team division like the matches they've been involved in over the past month and a half have been really really good for the women's division in my opinion like they're uh two names that if i see them on the match card i'm more intrigued i'm more intrigued to watch them wrestle i should say so um yeah it's a shame that the whole situation has gone down the way it has but i suppose it is what it is hopefully it can be sorted out and they are brought back that is if this is like a real life thing or i'm just being worked and it is turns out to be an elaborate storyline but i don't think so at the moment it does seem a bit of a weird situation but yeah if it is real hoping it will get sorted and then we got the main event it is the title unification match the usos versus rk bro a match that we've been anticipating for a very long time happy to see it here tonight um early on in the matchup though riddle gets whipped into the turnbuckle and he's selling his ribs and it looks like the referee holds up the x to signal that this is a legit injury he's got like a hip bruise or something like that he did look like he hit that turnbuckle quite hard and you notice um when they come back from commercial break that they're working over riddle but it's not like um nothing too extreme to be honest it looks like they're trying to work around his injury and maybe um just protect him a little bit so that makes me think that it is real but you know who knows maybe he's just a good seller uh there's uh, a, di a power bomb at one point and then riddle eventually makes the tag to randy orton who is a house of fire takes out both the usos rkos to both um, eventually Riddle does come back in, manages to hit some moves and it looks like he's getting some movement back in his hip. Um, and then eventually the match ends when he's going for a top rope RKO, but Roman Reigns coming through the crowd, holding onto his brother or his cousin as RKOs uh, to no one really, falls to the floor and Roman Reigns helping the Usos win the tag team championships. They are the undisputed tag team championships, but that is not all for this night. At the end of the matchup, Riddle is thrown onto an announce table and then Jey Uso with a massive his splash from the top rope absolutely crushing riddle and they stand tall as your new undisputed tag team champions the bloodline with all of the gold in the middle of the ring as smackdown face the black and this main event i thought it was decent um it could have been better in my opinion but again maybe there was an actual injury to riddle that necessitated it being um changed a little bit nevertheless i think that the usos winning these titles is you know it's a good thing to be honest um i think that maybe more conflict could have been 
arisen from RK Bro winning it maybe and the Usos being given like an ultimatum and then winning it but you know it's just different things uh predictable isn't necessarily a bad thing to be honest so yeah the bloodline standing tall and I wonder where Roman Reigns goes from here do we see him face Riddle maybe at Hell in a Cell do we see him face Randy Orton um or is he just not going to defend the title at all for the next month or so um only time will tell but yeah a decent main event to cap off a pretty solid show I will admit uh, there were some points in this show that it dragged a little bit. Maybe the opening promo and the Corbin segment did drag a little bit. Also, there were some rematches that we don't really need to see, like Butch versus Xavier Woods. Although, that said, it was a solid match. It just feels like they could be doing a little bit more. So, um, yeah, not the best episode of SmackDown in the world, but it was it was a decent middle-of-the-road SmackDown, I think. I really enjoyed Shinsuke versus Sami Zayn, and the main event was also quite fun, too. Um, also, Gunther as well, looking forward to his push, as well as Raquel Rodriguez, and, you know, anything with Butch in it. I'm a massive fan of, to be honest. <laughs> and it's also interesting to see what Max Dupree will do uh, heading forward. What will he uh, be as like, what will his role be? I should say on SmackDown, will he be managing Mace as we've seen in the dark matches and what will happen there? So yeah, most of it are uh, positive for SmackDown. Solid show. But what did you think of the show? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to NLW Fix for more wrestling figure content. And as always, like the video if you did enjoy. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys later.